Welcome back. So in some of the previous videos, we've learned how to tell if multiple metabolic problems were present at the same time. Remember, that was what the delta anion gap and the corrected bicarb were all about. In this lesson, you will learn how to tell if an additional respiratory problem is present on top of metabolic problems, or if an additional metabolic problem is present on top of a respiratory problem. In this video, we're going to learn about compensation. Compensation refers to the fact that the lungs will try to compensate for a metabolic problem by hyper and hypoventilating, and the kidneys will try to compensate for a respiratory problem by excreting or retaining bicarb. So this is the kidney representing the metabolic system, and these are the lungs representing the respiratory system. When there's metabolic acidosis, the lungs will hyperventilate, and when there's metabolic alkalosis, the lungs will hypoventilate. And when there's respiratory acidosis, the kidneys will cause bicarb retention. And when there's respiratory alkalosis, the kidneys will cause bicarb excretion. That's what the whole concept of compensation is all about. So let's have a look at what the kidneys do in the case of a respiratory acidosis first. So we said that in respiratory acidosis, the PCO2 goes up which causes the pH to go down in response to that, and the kidneys will try to compensate by increasing bicarb as well. So when there's no additional metabolic problem, then the kidneys will increase bicarb by a predicted amount. Since renal compensation takes hours to days, bicarb will increase just a little bit in acute respiratory acidosis and more in chronic respiratory acidosis because the kidneys have more time. Let's see what happens in the acute phase. So in this setting, for each 10 unit increase in PCO2, the bicarb will increase by one unit. What about the chronic phase? There, we said that the kidneys have more time to adapt. So here, for every 10 unit increase in the PCO2, bicarb will increase by three units. And what about respiratory alkalosis? Here, the PCO2 goes down in response to hyperventilation, as a consequence, the pH goes up, and since the kidneys try to compensate for that, they will cause bicarbonate excretion, so the bicarb will go down. What happens in acute respiratory alkalosis? Here, for every 10 unit decrease in PCO2, bicarb will decrease by two units. And what happens in the chronic setting? Here, for every 10 units decrease in PCO2, the bicarb will decrease by four units. What if the bicarb doesn't change by these amounts? Well, that probably means that there's an additional metabolic problem. If the bicarb is lower than predicted by these rules, there's also metabolic acidosis. And if it's higher than predicted, then there's probably also metabolic alkalosis. And what about metabolic acidosis? We know that here, as the bicarb goes down, the pH goes down, and as a compensatory mechanism, the PCO2 also goes down due to hyperventilation. Now, respiratory compensation takes place immediately. So here we don't discriminate between acute and chronic settings. So let's see by how much the lungs adapt in metabolic acidosis. For each unit decrease in bicarb, the PCO2 goes down by one unit. And what about metabolic alkalosis? Here, we also don't discriminate between acute and chronic problems since the lungs adapt to this immediately as well. So in metabolic alkalosis, the bicarb goes up and the pH will go up too. As a consequence, the patient will start to hypoventilate in order to correct the pH. As you can imagine, there's a certain limit as to how much the patient can hypoventilate. So this type of compensation is somewhat limited. Let's see by how much the PCO2 changes in this setting. So for every two unit increase in bicarb, the PCO2 will increase by one unit. And what's the problem if the PCO2 doesn't change by the predicted amount? What if the PCO2 is lower than predicted? Well, then that means that respiratory alkalosis is also present. And if it's higher than predicted, then respiratory acidosis is also present. So here's a little memory aid that should help you to remember what we've just learned. 
So on the left side, we write down acidosis. On the right side, we write down alkalosis. Then we have acute respiratory problems, chronic respiratory problems, and metabolic problems. And here are the compensatory changes that take place in each setting. We said in acute respiratory acidosis for every 10 unit increase in PCO2 bicarb goes up by one unit. In acute respiratory alkalosis, we said for every 10 unit decrease in PCO2, bicarb goes down by two units. In chronic respiratory acidosis, we said for every 10 units increase in PCO2, bicarb goes up by three units. And in chronic respiratory alkalosis, we said for every 10 units decrease in PCO2, bicarb goes down by four units. What about metabolic acidosis? Here, for every one unit decrease in bicarb, PCO2 goes also down by one unit. And what about metabolic alkalosis? Here, for every two unit increase in bicarb, PCO2 will also go up by one unit. So do you recognize a pattern here? Well, to tell you the truth, you really only have to remember the numbers in the left column and add one to the numerator in order to arrive at the numbers of the right column. So it's one over 10 for acute respiratory acidosis and two over 10 for acute respiratory alkalosis. It's three over 10 for chronic respiratory acidosis and four over 10 for chronic respiratory alkalosis. It's one over one for a metabolic acidosis and two over one for metabolic alkalosis. We can now complete our algorithm for diagnosing any acid-base problem. Let's write down the updated algorithm. So we said, number one, we calculate the anion gap. Number two, if there is an elevated anion gap, we calculate the delta anion gap and the corrected bicarb. Number three, we check the pH and the PCO2 in order to identify the primary problem is it metabolic or respiratory? And now there's an add-on. Number four, check if compensation is adequate. And if it's not, an additional acid-base problem is present. You now have all the tools it takes in order to assess over 90% of acid-base problems. Now go through the practice cases and make sure that what you've learned sticks.